Hey everyone, who's out there? It's all about agility today. Everything about agility. Let me know when you get on, where you're from, and uh, if you can hear me and you can see me and uh, everything's okay. Oh, I've got so much to share with you today. A lot of really cool stuff and I'm giving something really cool away. Super exciting day, all about dog agility. I am uh, starting with a, but I'm going to wait till you guys get on. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Sydney, Nova Scotia is in the house. Shannon, whoo! Can you hear me, Shannon? It's all good? Um, I'm assuming yes, because you made a comment. So this is all good. <clears throat> I'm going to share a question. In the comments, please let me know what level of agility competitor you are. Number one, uh, I've never done agility before, but I'd like to. Number two, I'm still just training. I've never really competed. Number three, I compete, but just for fun. And that one should have an asterisk beside it. And number four, I've been to an agility national championship. And number five, I've competed at Worlds. So what one of those do you guys belong to? Number one, I've never competed, but I really would like to. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to all of our American friends too. Woo, woo, woo. You know, us up here in Canada, we already celebrated Thanksgiving. Um, so what level? We've got some one, two, threes, some that are just curious about it. Some ones, some twos, some threes. So I compete, but just for fun. Uh, Lori Dunn's competed at nationals. Oh, hello from Spain. Just went to UK Open Nationals. That's awesome. We've got, so far, we've got everything except, so far, nobody that's competed at the World Championships. We have a lot of our students that have competed at the World Championships. So maybe one or two of them will jump on. Let's see what happens. Um, so as you get on, read the question and please let me know what level of agility competitor are you? And I'm going to put an asterisk beside number three. More to come on that later. So what level are you working at in agility? Okay. While you guys are coming on and you're sharing that, I have got something super exciting that I'm going to share with you. I don't know if you know this or not, but the good folks at Blue Nine have got a really cool, exciting product. Who knows about it? Yeah. Uh, I, I happen to actually have one or two here with me. All right. And what it is, does, does anybody know what that is? Yeah, it's memory foam. Yes, I've tried it out myself. Anyone know what it is? Well, you guys, come on. Keep telling me what level of competitor, and I'm going to share with you what it is. Okay. You guys are familiar with the climbs. The climbs, they have, you know, legs that you can put on. This is just an easy one for me to demo. These are memory foam tabletop covers for the climbs. Oh, it's like a cloud pillow for your dogs. And I will say for your dogs in Asterix because I've tried them out myself. Here's the deal. Yeah, right, Rebecca? Super, super cool. Let me show you. Uh, I'm going to just flip my camera so you can see. See, they come in a double too. Look at this. She's enjoying the double. And so... Just use, just so I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna share with you. Uh, look at, check this out. You can carry this around and instantly have a bed for like quote unquote for your dogs, but it's memory foam. I tell you what, next time I go to world championships, one of those is coming with me. Super exciting. Guess what? I'm going to be giving uh, two of those away today. Two. Two. First one, I'm going to give away. Um, I'm going to give them both away tomorrow. So I'm going to share, share with you how you can win one. So all you have to do right now, and even if you're watching this as a replay, is share this live feed saying, 
Susan is talking about all amazing things about agility. And so share it on your social media feed, on Twitter, on Facebook, on, I don't know, Instagram, TikTok. Share it. Come on back here and write in the comments, I shared it. And tell us where so that my team can check where you shared it. Tomorrow, I'll go live again tomorrow. And it will be later in the evening. And I will declare a winner. And then I'll tell you at the end of today's live how the we get a second winner. Okay, so it's all about agility today. And yes, I understand some people are at having Thanksgiving dinner, which is why I'm not going just to announce the winner today. It will be announced tomorrow, Black Friday. I might have already done some shopping. Okay, so we've got a lot of number ones, twos, and threes in what level of agility competitor are you? And um, I put an asterisk beside number three. I, I told you, put an asterisk beside number three, because guess what? Here's the truth. All of us do agility just for fun. Agility has been part of my life since I took my first agility class. Uh, well, I competed in my first agility trial in 1991. So some of you listening to this probably weren't even born. And it was just for fun. I started it just for fun. I didn't know I was going to be a world champion. It's still, I'm 61 years old. It's still, I keep doing it just for fun. So, you know, people say to me, oh, I, I just do agility just for fun. I don't want to be at like a national or a world championship a level. We all do it just for fun. But there's, there's an important thing that you need to understand is agility can be, well, let me know in the comments. Have you, have you ever been frustrated training or competing in agility. And if you haven't, then I bet you've never trained or competed in agility because there's so many things to learn and you feel like such a fraud at times because you don't know it all and you feel like you should and you get frustrated and you get frustrated by your dog, even though you really shouldn't. All right. Uh, Charlotte, it's got to be on your page. If you want to win, it's got to be on your social media page. So Elena says 100% she, uh, she's been frustrated in agility. So when we are frustrated with our dog or, or by, by what we're doing, what happens, guys, is the confidence level of the dog is inversely related to the frustration level. So if you're working at, at the beginning of this little chart here, frustration level is high, high, high for you or your dog. Confidence will be low, low, low. The higher the, the, the lower the frustration level, guys, the higher the confidence level. Higher the confidence for your dog, higher the confidence for you. So that's why when we say we all do it just for fun, we all do agility just for fun, but it's super, super important that you make sure that your confidence level is high and your dog's confidence level is high. And you might say, oh, Susan, I can't have a high confidence. I'm just learning this. You can have high confidence with what you know. Okay, so I've got another question for you. Those of you who have trained in agility, what, what do you think, how many, if I was going to group the categories of skills that you need, put them in the, in, the, in the comments. What categories of skills do you need to have fun and success in agility? I'm going to share with you what I think they are, but put them in here what you think they are. What categories of skills do you think you need? And I'm not talking about, like, for me, I've grouped them into four categories. So if you were going to put them into just four categories, what categories? Communication, Marissa, great one. So that would be the handling. Handling is one category. That is our communication with, with our dog and agility, right, is is, and I would, actually I would put relationship into, and handling and communication, it's all in one category for me. Because otherwise there's probably a zillion categories that we could come up with. But uh, engagement, Zena, great. I would put that into handling. That's in my handling category. What other connection is all about connection? Agility is all about connection and that is in the handling category. Uh, focus, obstacle commitment, handler, fitness. You know, uh, Kristen, handling, handler fitness is a bonus. I don't, I don't think handler focus is a, a must for agility. 
because there's too many people that, I mean, can play it at any level. I, I've, I've competed at the world championships when I wasn't at my, at my fittest. So, um, so put in the categories you guys think we would, we would group things. Kindness and grace, that goes into handling for sure. Keep, keep putting those in there, guys, what you think it is. I'm going to tell you the first one that most people, this is the, what most people think about. It's the obstacles. That's all. Agility is just about obstacles, right? How many of you in your very first agility class, all that you were taught, and you might be there now. If you're in a level two, level one or two or three, you might be there now. All they do is they, they teach you the obstacles and then you enter a trial. Say that's me if, that, if you've ever, ever been in that situation. Agility is just about the obstacles. They just teach you the obstacles. I'm here to tell you horse feathers. That's not true. Horse feathers, not true at all. But that's what, that's what people will have you believe. My very first ever agility class, I got to tell you, it was in 1989. So what did anybody actually? Yeah, it was 1989. Um, all that we taught, all that we ever did was, was obstacles. Right. And once you've got your, oh, Kathy Lofthouse for the win. Kathy, that's another one. So, yeah, you guys are doing good. You guys are doing good. I think you've got them all. So the second one uh, is handling. Third one is fitness. My fourth category, mindset. You guys came up with all four categories, all four categories. But most people will tell you agility, when you go to an agility class, oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's all just about, let's just teach some weed poles, uh, a seesaw and a dog walk, and we're good to go. And unfortunately, that's what people focus on, is it, when they get to a class, that's all they focus on, is how good, how, you know, will your dogs do those things that you're pointing to? Handling, in my first class, was just about putting your hand out and saying, over, over, jump right? That's not. That's where you have a high degree of frustration and a low degree of confidence in the dog and in the handler when you just focus on the obstacles. <laughs> Got somebody roaming around back there. All right. So there's so much more. And if you want to maximize your fun, then you're going to maximize your confidence in your dog's confidence. And the way to maximize your confidence and your dog's confidence is to realize there's four areas that you need to be exposed to, be exposed to and ideally be brilliant at. And so handling could start just by your dog following you on the flat, on the flat, right? That could be what I'm just going to do. I'm going to put the camera on here. I'm going to change the camera. I'll do a little... Um, get my my dog up okay Chelsea can you work this camera for me please so I'm going to come out here and you can just make sure that there we go Missy come here get uh, 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 uh. got a rogue got a rogue momentum okay so I'm just this is handling I'm not going to do any obstacles I'm just, I'm going to do handling, guys. Can you get close? So this is handling. My dog is following my body. If I want to turn left, if I want my dog to go turn tight, that's the dog following my body. That's, that's handling. That's what handling is. Thank you. Okay. Can you hop it? Dizzy? You can hop it up there. Good. But, the, but what we have to do is we have to be able to handle at a bigger level. We have to be able to handle um, complexities in agility, right? We have to be able to know where our dog is and get distance away from them All, and the dog still be listening. So handling is not just about your, your body, it's about your voice. So handling is about your dog understanding one word means one thing. Um, does Minty have a little wrap on? Um, can you just set a jump up over there and I'll, I'll do a demo with her. Right, so 
we need the dog. And I guess it was 10 years ago when I introduced Handling 360 to the world and I um, started saying things like la 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 to tell the dog to do something. And everybody started saying that we're crazy. The people who were doing this were crazy. Well, guess what? Most of the agility world now knows verbals are important, but a lot of them don't know how to teach it in a way that creates confidence and doesn't create frustration in a dog. And so I'm going to give you this big warning right now. If you're in agility class and they say to you, you can get your dog in agility competing in, after an eight-week course, run. Run. Thank them for your ta their time and get out because you will maximize frustration. You will have a dog at best who will do agility guessing, but at worst will get so frustrated that they don't want to do it. Handling is about a dog absolutely understanding what you want after. It's not about naming obstacles. This is a tunnel, do a tunnel. It's about telling the dog what I want after the tunnel. I'll just do a couple little things with a jump with um, momentum, and then I'll do some with uh, this, my, my younger dog, out of a tunnel. So I'm just going to make this faster. I'll just use treats with Minty. Okay. So, oh, got to change my camera. Change my camera so you guys get to see this. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. Men? Okay. So... I'll get one toy, one toy. Come here, Moo. Can you get that? Um, we got to get that lower because we haven't done much of a warm up. So don't. She did just go for a little walk, though. Okay, come here, Moo. So most people would say, "Oh, that's a jump." We just tell our dog, "Come here," at my side. We just tell the dog, "Jump." Do you see how jump means go as far as you can? Go out and take what you see next. She was about to take that, the, actually probably going to take the seesaw, truthful, truthfully. Thank you. Out. Thank you. All right. But you don't always want your dog to jump. Sometimes you might want them to go right, 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 right. So that is, I need you to turn nice and tight to the right. Or loop, 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 loop. I need you to turn nice and tight to the left. Or oh, I need you to go to the back side towards me, or ah, la, 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 la. I need you to go to the back side away from me. These are just a few little cues that our dog, look at the dog's confidence. When you're running an agility course and your dog knows with that much confidence, oh, I jump and I go take what's ahead of me. Oh, I slow down and I turn super tight. Oh, I cut in and I, and, I, and I do the backside. That is a dog that can have confidence and, and you guys start to come together as a team. That's what handling is about. It's about your voice and it's about your motions. Does that make sense to you guys? Give me a yes in the comments if that makes sense. That handling is about, yeah, we're gonna be running. We're gonna be running as fast as we can. So. Somebody who understands, or somebody who's like 26 and super fit and has a history in sports, they can run a lot faster than I can. So I need to rely on my dog listening to my words while they're running as fast as they can, because my dog can run a lot faster than me. And there's a very good chance that your dog can run a lot faster than you. And if they can't, what may have happened is they've learned to slow down to adapt to you. They've learned to slow down in order to get that feedback from you. And here's how you can tell if you've got 100% confu uh, confusion or 100% confidence. Does your dog take an obstacle and then look at you? Take an obstacle, then look at you. If they're looking at you between obstacles, they don't have the confidence to drive a line. And that is what agility is about. But truthfully, guys, truthfully, if you look at, this is what, these are some of the skills that we have to teach our dogs in agility. Some, some of the skills. It's a, it's, it could be overwhelming. You could look at it and go, 
I don't think I could do this sport. Anyone can do this sport. You love your dog. You love to learn and you love to play games together. Anybody. This is a sport that's welcoming to everybody. Everybody, right? You just need to approach it in strategic layers. Otherwise, it's, oh, yeah, I saw somebody doing something about a seesaw. I'm going to teach my dog a seesaw. Oh, I saw somebody doing something about, oh, how I can do the uh, jumping skills or uh, uh, strategic layers is what's building confidence in your dog, right? If you guys have any questions while I'm going through this, hundred just, just, you know, say, Susan, I, I don't quite understand this. Please take me back a little bit. Okay. She's looking at me while she, so, and Roland wrote, she's looking at me while she's taking the obstacle and she's dropping the bars. There's some confusion there. And that's so common. A lot of dogs, especially fast ones, when they look at their handler, they they turn their head here. Let's say this is your dog. And when they're going over an obstacle, if they turn their head, that drops that outside shoulder, which drops the inside back leg and the bar knocks from that inside back leg, right? So, so common. It's so, so common. So you need to take, you need to approach things in layers. And the first layer, a lot of you guys, when I asked you the elements of agility, you, you nailed it. It's relationship. It's the dog working for what you have. It's the dog not waiting. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to show you um, in a second. I'll show, I'm going to show you uh, my puppy. She's seven months old and we have, she's moved beyond the relationship. She, I mean, relationship is always part of what we build into every layer. And we're working on the second thing. And that is working on the things that will help us be great at the obstacles when we get to the obstacles. But you sign up for an agility class, a lot of the times they start you on the obstacles on day one. So why don't we get the puppy out, Kim? And let's do some directionals. So the dog understanding straight, turn right, we start it on the flat. We start it without, we start it without any, actually, let's go one step before that. Let's do some focus forward. So get a couple things out here that she can focus on, and I'm going to set up the camera. Um, yeah, just in a sit, we'll do it. Um, we'll lower that jump. She doesn't actually do a bar yet. She just does a um, bump, but we can lower that and, or grab. Chelsea can go grab a bump. Okay. Uh, what if the dog is overconfident and just runs over the obstacles on their own and the human ceases to exist? That's awesome, human. Um, that tells me that you skipped. Oh, Lori Codger says happy birthday, Kim. It's Kim's birthday today. That you skipped that connection layer, that you skipped that it's a team. You've put a lot, like, first of all, Elizabeth, give yourself a pat on the back because you've built in a lot of value for doing stuff. And doing stuff is a part of agility, but doing stuff is what people, a lot of, a lot of instructors tell you, like, this is what we gotta do first. No, it's not. We've gotta get a relationship. We've gotta, we gotta build those layers, right? We've gotta build the layers that tell us that, that you can work with me. You don't go off without me. There's so many layers. We call it, well, there's the preparation. Does your dog love to tug? Does your dog love food? And if they love one more than the other, do you, we, should we balance that out? Or should we just come up with creative, more creative ways to use food? So, so that is an important that you can do. Yes, Robin, you can do this with limited peripheral vision. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get out there and do that first. So we'll just do some focus forward. So this is a puppy learning to focus on a line, okay? Nope. Oh, I gotta change my camera. Just get her out there and have her focus on the jump, just like it was a jump grid. I gotta change my camera. Um, So I'm going to move just nice and close so she knows what she's doing. Can you, I think we're going to move this all in because the camera won't be able to see her. 
I can't zoom in with a little webcam. Here, I can do it if you want, Kim. The jump. B, come here. Good, sit, nice. So do you see how the puppy is staring up at me now? I've got cookies, good. She's staring at me. Now watch when I come off to the side that she will. <laughs> can you just make sure they can see it in there, please? I'll go over to this side so that you guys can, I can make sure you can see it. Okay, oh, B, come here, sit. So she's staring at me, staring at me, staring at me. But as soon as I get out here, good. Break. She stare, she's going to take her gaze away from me and towards the jump. Actually, she was looking at her sister, but sit. Come here. You can go back here. Sit. So now, looking at me, looking at me, looking at her jump. Looking at me. Good. Break. Search. So, so that's a dog who is starting to focus on a line. Do you want to do one more? Come here, B. She's seven months old. Can, can you guys see her from there? Is she tucked behind the wing? Sit. Good. L watch. Looking at me. Looking at me. Looking at me. And good. Good. So I'm, see how long she will look at her line. Break. Search. <laughs> she, she's like going off that way for the cheat to the to the cookie bowl over there. Okay, that's all. So that's what we want first. We want a dog who will focus at the work. Doesn't matter that I have cookies, her most favorite thing on earth. She's like, okay, I love this jump. And that was what Elizabeth said, oh, my dog just goes off and takes things on their own. Maybe a little bit too much of that. We need the balance as we're growing these skills for, for our dogs. That's so, so very important that people, yeah, people fall in love so this is a great comment, Ashley. People love the sexy obstacles. I want to teach a seesaw. I want to teach weave poles. I want to teach a running contact. But agility is actually about a lot more than obstacles. A lot more than obstacles. Okay, so it's super important that we build these up strategically. So little B, belief, she's seven months old, constantly always working on relationship, which we do even, even with my dog that I competed at the world championship with, constantly working on relationship, but it starts with focus, with drive, with connection, All right? So, and B, B can come out and do, do you wanna do some circle work with her? So she's just, we're just doing the beginning steps of her learning to follow Kim's body or my body, depending on who's doing it. You can just move that jump for her, Chelsea. Yeah, uh, yeah we might be able to see it, but it might be too far away. Okay, so we, yes, it's groundwork. It's groundwork, guys. There's so, there's so much you can do. Some of you say, oh, I don't have, I don't have this facility, Susan. I don't have all, all this agility equipment. You don't need it. Success happens at the ground level. Fun, maximize fun, maximize understanding. You want to maximize fun for your dog, you maximize understanding. You want to maximize fun for yourself, you maximize understanding. Absolutely. And so we need to do that by building things up step by step. So a lot of people will join our program Handling 360 and their dog is distracted by the environment. So we work on this layer for longer. Let's work on your relationship. Let's work on the dog responding. Let's work on your dog doing focus forward on a jump, focus forward on an, whatever it is that we're training. Okay, so you can get her out there now. So, so this is fairly new for this puppy. Okay. So we're working on her following Kim and staying close. And when Kim turns, she turns. Kim's birthday, she's a little drunk, so don't mind. So that's super, seven month old puppy. And that's how agility starts. Thank you, Kim. Go back to, go back to your beverage. <laughs> And that's, and that's how agility begins. You're following a line and separately we teach them the verbal skills as well. Does that make sense? Does that, can you see how the next layer is? Now we add driving a line, driving straight. Oh, let's get, since she's out here, can we do this? 
Okay, so you get over there and I'll, and I'll talk, I'll set this one up. So the next layer is you can follow my body. You can focus on what I'm standing in front of. Can you go on without me and do a skill? And so this is where we start to introduce verbal cues. Again, you and I, any of you watching this, your dog can outrun you. If you've ever seen your dog chase a squirrel, if you can't run that fast, that's how fast we want them doing agility because they love it because you maximized fun. And so when we get to that stage, guys, we need to have a dog that will listen, listen to us. So this is, again, I'll get belief out here with Kim. Um, I'll just get that out of there. Okay, we're going to get Kim. I'm going to change my camera, show you another layer of that foundational work that we do. Incoming. Okay, so I'm going to help Kim. If she gets it right, I'll throw a cookie in this bucket. Okay, so she's got to be able to run away from Kim. And because Kim's not as fast as she is, so she's got to go off and leave on her own. Let's do another straight. Good. All right, so that's helping the puppy say, yes, I can go off on, on a straight line. Now, you don't have to have, we're using a remote feeder. You don't have to use a remote feeder. We've got, um, you can just say yes for now. So we've got buckets here. And so there's no food in the buckets. Hold on, guys. So you can see, there's nothing in this bucket. It's, it's something that she drives to. That could be a tunnel. That could be a tunnel. So she's looking forward because she just went forward and now Kim gives her another cue. Wait till she... Okay, so that was a failure, but there's no rewards in there. It's like, that wasn't it. There was nothing in there. Oh, right. Good girl, search. Nice. Good girl. Go see. Oh, that's, that's just fluff, Kim. Do another straight, because there's cookies outside that bowl she might want now. Let's see if she'll go straight. Oh. Nice. And do one more turn. I don't see the cookies outside the bowl, but I'll toss, I'll toss them in if she gets it right. right. Go ahead, search. Good job. Good girly. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of what some of those layers look like. Some of the low, and we're still, we're still just building the handling. We're just building the handling, right? So you could use a clicker for that. She is, and she's just using a word uh, good for her to mark that she's got it right. Okay, so that is building up from the ground and you can do this at home you don't need any fancy equipment for this you can use food bowls you can just chuck food you can there's so many opportunities if you don't have anything fancy then we need our dogs to respond when they're in motion so it could be that the dog is is, is driving and this is the foundation of our verbal cues of the right and the left or as momentum showed at the beginning going into what side of the jump that I, I asked you to go on and then you're going to now we've got our dog who now we're introducing things like jumps and tunnels and the dog can listen to your body and they can turn and they can they can do fancy things away from you we need your dog going at top speed and your top speed. So all of this was like going a little slower, you, you know, because, you know, uh, there's, there's a, um, a great quote is you need to be uh, slow to be fast, right? And so we start them at their speed, but then once their confidence grows, they can do two or three or four obstacles super fast, listening to all our words. And you go at your top speed. My top speed isn't as fast as Kim's top speed. Kim's top speed isn't as fast as probably 70% of the people running agility's top speed. <laughs> all right. But that's what you do. This is all just working on handling. And then we work on 
short courses. And I say, do you see that in the white? I say, what's your number as a team? And this is a mistake that a lot of people make is they try to run agility. They go, oh, my dog understands agility, uh, obstacles. I'm going to run an obstacle, a course of 20 obstacles. What I have my student do is, you tell me, how many obstacles can you remember, can you navigate successfully? Oh, Susan, three. Okay, that's your number. You're not going to do courses with more than three obstacles. Very quickly, you're going to go, I can do more than that. Oh, five, that's your number. So I'm always asking, what is your number? When you know what your number is, that's where you are as a team. You, go, you want to keep building confidence by staying within your number. And if you can do three and you get really good at it, you can go to four. And you get really good at four, you can go to five. And then you could do two sets of four. Put them together, we've got eight. That's how we build confidence. All right, I'm going to share with you a comment from one of my students in Handling 360. It's brought my agility dog so much relief. Now she does not worry about what I'm asking or what she should do. She can see, you can see the joy in the dog. That comes from that confidence. That's what we're looking for. So a lot of people, they'll run agility and their dog will like leave to go visit a judge or leave to go visit the gate steward or somebody's eating potato chips out here. Or they just get the zoomies and they go, oh, this is a big open area. I'm just going to go. We need from our dogs to ignore the environment to have that what we call environmental neutrality. It's just so, so important. And only then do we consider longer courses, okay? But we don't get to that level until we've got the fitness and the mindset. So fitness, there's so many people who say to me, I let agility be my dog's fitness. That's just a path to injury. You need to cross train and simple, simple little things. You don't need anything fancy. Although I do love my, my climbs and my cater boards and my um, propels, my number one favorite thing. But you could do something, just bring her out here and grab, grab something uh, like the planks. Let's just do some planks. We need to keep our dog. And, and so pup, the puppy's seven months old. She, she knows all kinds of different fitness exercises. Fitness that we're going to build up strength, proprioception, cardio, flexibility. So we need to build all that up. So that makes the, doing the obstacles so much easier. People try to do the obstacles first. So we're going to do perch work. Yeah, right. So Kim's going to do a, 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 dog, a dog dish that we got at the, fit, at the uh, feed mill and, some, and just some planks. Okay. So we'll get that camera. Yep. Yep. Just use those then or start with those and then get the other planks out and you can do the side and close with those. Okay. So that's it guys. That's, that's what you need to be focusing on. What daily can you do to help your dog be slightly more fit for the sport that you love? Okay. I'm just going to go and see what Kim's doing with the puppy again. Okay. So something as simple as this, just getting them to stand square on, those are two by fours with a yoga mat. I bet your yoga mat is doing the same thing mine was, collecting dust. Wrap a couple, two, wrap it up in some two by fours. And now we've got, that's, that's tough for a dog to stand like that. Well, can you walk around behind her? So that she is helping to, this is a balancing exercise now that we are we're always feeding in front, but the dog doesn't move their feet and they're learning to balance in that position. And then you can take it to something like those propels that are there with, with B. Yep. So you, you can give them a little push and they have to work against that resistance. So there's, you guys, there's a few little things you already know now, thank you, Kim, about building up your dog's fitness for agility, right? So, the final element is your mindset. And again, uh, how many people have ever gone in run agility, things didn't go the way they planned, and your friends are outside of the ring, and you're feeling a little embarrassed, 
because maybe your dog had a little poop in the ring or your dog ran off visiting or your dog started sniffing or your dog crashed all the jumps or the dog jumped off all the A-frames or the dog broke the start line. And that is now put a deposit in your memory bank of what agility is like, is that wave of embarrassment that goes over you. And that is starting to create your mindset. And so every agility trial either builds up your confidence and mindset or tears it down. What contributes to that? How well do you understand how to, how to memorize a course? How well do you understand how to read a course and know the best path for your dog to take? How well do you understand how to handle a course? How well do you understand how to visualize the course so that it, it's just second nature? You don't have to think about it when you're running. All of that contributes to your mindset bank. And that either helps build your confidence or it tears it down. Does, has anybody ever had one of those experiences, Or is it just me? I, I mean, if you go about this the right way, you, you, you can overcome those situations. I'll tell you the, the most embarrassing one that I had, and it, I wasn't embarrassed at all because I'm just like, that's agility. Sometimes you're the hero and sometimes you learn a great lesson. I was at the world championships when you're running two dogs for the Canadian team. I ran first and I ran last. I ran the wrong course with both dogs because I read the course map wrong. I blame it on my dyslexia. It doesn't matter. I ran the same, I ran the course wrong twice and I came out of the ring. It was the world championships. Not only were there thousands of people in the stands, there was thousands of people watching on the live stream. Oh, well, still love my dog. I'll, be, I'll do better next time. What did I learn? That comes from having hundreds, thousands of positive experiences in my memory bank. And that's what you need. All right. Does that, are you guys following this? Do you understand how there's now four pillars to agility? It's not just about obstacles. No, Susan, I just want to have fun. Do you think it's more fun having a bunch of positive experiences in your mindset bank? Can you see how that would benefit you, even if you're just doing agility for fun? I just want to do a weekend warrior, something to do with my dog on a weekend. Yeah, Veronica says, yeah, I can see how that can be fun. Oh, a question. Um, a person in situation on TV, a thing my dog needs to the body. Can you come closer so I can, so I don't have to repeat it? Okay. I'm autistic and situationally non-speaking. I train my dog using hand signals, body language primarily, mm -hmm. and verbal cues secondarily. Mm -hmm. I run agility without verbal skills. We are finally getting faster and complicated courses and more competitive, and we need to add distance. Can you offer some suggestions for non-verbally training distance? You can non-verbally train distance, absolutely. It is more challenging. So you just do what I showed you with the puppy. How well does your dog do two, three, four, five obstacles without looking back at you? That's your goal. Just get two. Once you get two, get three. Once you get three, get four. So you can, but it, you have to have very discreet body language that only means one thing to your dog. Right? And so once you've got that, so... Um, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you with, the, uh, with this, okay? I'll just set, set up this camera here and I'll just show you. Um, this is not common for me. Oh, my jump's gone. I need the jump. This is not something I commonly do with my dogs, run without words because I'm too slow. I get way too far behind. I think now, you know, being neurodivergent, you definitely have, I mean, I understand that we, there are skills or situations that are more challenging than for other people. But the question is, can you just make sure that camera's pointing the right way? But the question is, could you, and I don't know, maybe the answer is absolutely no, Susan. Could you learn to use verbals if you were a thousand percent confident and relaxed? Is there situations when you're at the park and you can call your dog when they're off running? So that would be, is there one verbal that you could use? So if I do this to my dog, I mean, we all have to have one verbal, 
right? Oh, Matt, not you. <laughs> go, go hop it up. <laughs> this break. So I just said break. That's all I said. And she came. Now, what if I did this now? Ready? Can you sit? I'll do it again because you're going to say, well, she's not on the table both times. Break. Now, I honestly don't know if she'll do this because this is not norm for me. I think Minty probably would. Can I have my ting? Thank you. Can you get in and sit? Good. Now, let's see this. Break. So she's not, so she's going to do the same thing. Let's see if momentum will do it. Okay, you hop it up. Good, good. Matt, come here. Sit. Break. Come here, move. Thank you. Okay, hop it up. Oh, Matt, back. Sit. Momentum's got more ring experience. Sit. So she might do it. Break. Good. So that's what you can do. Good girl, move. Come here. Thank you. Can you bring me my toy? Thank you. Search. So that, that is a possibility, is one move means one thing, and then you can't, I mean, there'll be, there'll be issues that will present itself that makes it more difficult for one handler than the other, but that doesn't mean that handler can't do agility and excel at it. You just have to adapt the communication between you. So could I run my dogs without saying anything? I could, but the challenge I would have is when they got really far ahead of me, which they will because they're so much faster than me. Okay. I hope that makes, makes sense. Um, so it really is you know, your goals in agility are, are your own individual thing. So, and they'll, they're going to change, guys. They're, they are going to change. You just say, I just want to see my dog doing the obstacles. That was where I was when I first started back in the 80s. I see somebody roaming around. Can you hop it up, please? I just want to see my dog doing the obstacles. And very quickly, it was like, oh, I want my dog not to be confused. I want my dog to really understand. And then it'll go to, oh, I want my dog to be really fast and have fun and real. And so your goals will change, but they're still going to be dictated by you. However, those four pillars, those should be at the forefront for everybody, for everybody. Maybe you're going to spend more time or less time on fitness than somebody else. But those, those four pillars are what, is, if you want to maximize success and maximize the fun for your dog, then those have got to be what you're doing. And some of you may go, well, um, I did everything wrong, Susan. I did start with a class and they had me on the equipment right away. And then I went to my first trial and it was an, a little embarrassing and my dog was frustrated and they did shut down. And here I want you to say, Grace means that all of your mistakes now serve a purpose instead of, a, of serving shame. There's, you know what? You are exactly where you're meant to be. Here's, here's a, one of my students who, who was in that situation. So grateful to H6, H360 program has really helped my Aussie to find the value for me and for agility. The 4H360 Reacher would leave work all the time. I was so frustrated. I'm now combining what I've learned in H360 with Control Unleash and even joined an online class that is taught, taught by a behaviorist. I feel that we're so much further ahead and much more well behave, prepared because of H360. Give yourself grace. Everybody is starting at a different spot. Okay? So you need to consider what's, what's possible for you. You don't need all this fancy equipment. If you got it, bonus. There's things that you can do starting right now, all right? And you're probably aware that right now we have a, um, a program. It's cyber. It's like Black Friday tomorrow, and we're running a program right now. You can join any of our, our agility programs right now for the best price we ever offer. Uh, and, and start now. What's the difference between Handling 360 and Agility Nation? Handling 360 is all about those layers, 
all of these layers right here, these are all our, these are all our classrooms. Prep school, you get to work on your relationship and work on the handling. Flat work is where we're doing all those obstacles. Blueprint is when we introduce with one or two jumps just those verbal cues. Then we start adding speed and sequencing at triple-double. Start doing little short courses for GPS, and then you're running full-out courses. So our Handling 360 is actually very robust. So we could sell any one of those courses for $500. And a lot of our, our peers will do that. You'll see people selling um, just their their beginner level agility, online agility classroom. And that might just be the, the flat work or it might just be prep school. We're selling them all in one because I believe it's so good for people to see all different layers of excellence when they're in that classroom. So you're, you're going to be able to go ahead and say, oh yeah, look what they're doing up there. I see how what I'm doing with my arm when I'm doing the circle work makes sense now, right? So handling 360 is is six classrooms, and you follow a lesson plan. Where Agility Nation is where you learn all of the other obstacles, all of the other, sorry, all of the other obstacles, like weave poles or, or um, doing ment the mindset games or the learning how to do jump work or all the fitness. So in Handling 360, it's a membership. You can join for a month. You can get in there and like be like a kid in a candy store. But I recommend you join for a year and be very strategic about the approach that you're taking for you and your dog. Okay, so it's, it's just, um, you know, we, we've been teaching this program for 10 years, my coaches and I, and um, I, it's just amazing to see people with breeds of dogs they never thought would be excel at agility be brilliant. That, that people who never thought that they would be one of those people that was going to a national championship. No, I just want to have fun. All of a sudden, their dog's in a place and they're like, yeah, let's, let's go for it. One of our students I spoke about on my podcast this week, um, a student by the name of Jenny Kerwick, who actually got to, has grown to be a good friend of mine now. She's actually going to be coming up here next week. And Jenny came to me with a, with a Siberian Husky who used to get in the ring and chase his tail. <laughs> and, oh, he was a card. He was a character. Oliver was hysterical. And... So Jenny realized there was missing layers. And when you're missing layers, you're trying to do agility and you don't have all those pillars in place and your dog is just going to get frustrated. And Jenny went on to her next Siberian Husky, not only could do agility, and she had so much fun teaching and learning from Oliver that her next dog went on and won, won a, a regional. A Siberian Husky beat the border collies people. And that's what comes from having that confidence, okay? So until Monday, you can join Handling 360 or Agility Nation at the, the best investment you'll ever find it at. And if you have questions, you can let me know. And I am going to tell you that after this live is over, which will be shortly, there'll be a post on my Facebook page. I guess I got to tell you where to go to join. Here you go. You can go to dogsat.com forward slash cyber if you would like to learn more about Handling 360 or Agility Nation. And after this is over, you can go to my Facebook page and there'll be a post called Gems. What did you learn from today's um, live? What were you, what's your takeaway? What is your first action steps? Leave that on uh, uh, under the post called Gems. And my team and I will pick another winner and give away another beautiful memory foam topper for your climb. And if you don't have one, guys, you're going you're gonna to want several. I love, love, love them. Okay, any questions for me before we um, sign off? Any of you out there have questions? If you're thinking about agility, the this is the... Handling 360 would be the best place to start because you're growing, you're, you're something to do with your dog, that you're growing that connection, you're deepening your relationship, you're heading down the road towards something. You may not even decide, like, I don't really want to do agility. I just want to do all the fitness stuff. That's in Agility Nation. So, but if you want to do agility, Handling 360 is definitely the place to start. Okay, no questions? 
Okay, well, um, when am I coming to Australia for seminar? I am coming to Australia. I was I wanted to come this uh, in the fall, but at last it didn't work out. So I will be going to Australia in the spring. That's my plan right now. I don't know that I'm going to be doing any teaching while I'm there. I'm not sure. Um, and it's not like I haven't been asked. I have been asked, but I've got a lot of things to do, like seeing whales, seeing turtles, like stuff like that. Anything else, you guys? Okay, well, thank you. And um, if you have any questions, leave them here. I'm going to go live tomorrow, and I'll, I'll answer your questions. Okay, I'll see you.